Lauren Dewar and Jimmy Pell Laurie. This in there is Michelle Lucia. Hola, me amo Emily. Hello, I'm Beth. And, and we're, we're from White Hills Primary School in Fort Ferangus. Hi, I'm Claire. Hi, I'm Kian. Hi, I'm Rory. Hi, I'm Sugar. We are the European Einstein from Hermitage Primary. Hi, we're Katna Primary School and we'll be representing Edinburgh at this year's EuroQuiz final. Yeah! Hello, willkommen in unserer Schule. High School of Dundee! Ich heiße Antonia. Ich heiße Olli. Ich heiße Daniel. Ich heiße Adi. Ich heiße Emily. Ich heiße Joe. My name's Joe. Mi amo Ian. My name's Ian. Je m'appelle Amy. My name's Amy. Mi amo Aiden. My name is Aiden. We are representing Meadowburn Primary School, Bishop Briggs, Eastern Bartonshire. Cheers! Hello, my name is Maria. I go to the Grand School of Bons in Primitive. Ciao, I call Negozi. I go to the School Elementary of Santa Bernadette. Bonjour, I call Noel. I go to the School Primaire de Saint Bernadette. Hola, mi amo Dylan. Fue a la escuela primaria de Santa Verde. Hello, we are the Crying Miracle Quiz team. Here are all our names. I'm Douglas. I'm Matthew. I'm Gillian. I'm Jessica. And I'm Sarah. We are all very excited to be doing Euro Quiz this year. And good luck to all the other teams. Hi, we go to Greenwoods Primary School. I'm Sadie. Jim Appel, Joseph. I'm Pearl Harrison and I'm Indy. We're really looking forward to taking part in the Euro Quiz. Hi, bonjour. Hola. Hello. Salut. We're from Cathedral Primary. Salut. Je m'appelle Fendi. Bonjour. Je m'appelle Cameron. Salut. Je m'appelle Rosie. Salut. Je m'appelle Heidi. Some like Europeans, they like call Primera Melrose. Bonjour, ciao, hello, hola. From Whiteness Primary School in, in Shetland. Three. Chefash. Hola, mi amo es Luis. Hello, es Heisa Caitlin. Bonjour, je m'appelle Lucy. Trish, my name is Victor. Ciao. Hello, my name is Ailey. Bonjour, je m'appelle Lina. Hello, my name is Patrick. Hola, me amo Joshua. We, we are the Eurovis finalists 2020 from Our Lady of Lewis Primary School. Hola. 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 I'm Lexi. I'm Amy. I'm James. I'm Nathan. We're the ladies. Adios. We are the Lithgow Primary School. I'm Cameron. I am Ewan. I'm Duncan. I am Alistair. Bonjour. Hola. Guten tag. Bonjour. No. Hello. My name is Christine Graham, and as Deputy Presiding Officer of the Scottish Parliament, I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome you all to the 2020 Euroquiz final. I'm proud that this Parliament has played host to this event for many years, but of course this is a first for us to do so online. The COVID-19 pandemic has brought dramatic changes to the way we all live our lives, schools, individuals and this Parliament. They all have had to do and adapt to new ways of working. In the space of weeks, we went from debating and voting here in our debating chamber in Holyrood to doing so online before setting out on a bit of a mixture of the two, a so-called hybrid parliament. So it's been a bit of a change for all of us, just here like you've had in your schools. Meeting virtually has quickly become the new normal for many of us, and I commend the Scottish European Educational Trust and their partners for embracing this technology to enable the 2020 quiz to go ahead, despite the obvious challenges to both them and you, the competition's first ever virtual participants. And to our finalists participating today, can I say a big well done, with over 2,200 pupils from 440 schools from across Scotland taking part in the heats, 
getting to this point is a remarkable achievement in itself. So, from our debating chamber here at Holyrood, to those of you watching remotely from across the country, I hope you enjoyed today's event and will conclude my remarks by wishing all our young finalists the very best of luck. I now invite the head of the European Parliament Liaison Office in Edinburgh, Per Johansson, to talk to you a little more about how today's final will run. Thank you and good luck again. Hello everyone. Thank you, Christine Graham, Deputy Presiding Officer, for welcoming us all to the 2020 Euroquiz final. Jag heter Per och jag jobbar för Europaparlamentet i Skottland. Ich heiße Per und ich arbeite für das Europäische Parlament in Schottland. Je m'appelle Per. Je travaille pour le Parlement européen à l'Écosse. My name is Per and I work for the European Parliament in Scotland. So if you understood all of those things in all of those European languages, that will help you very much later on in the quiz. We in the European Parliament would like to congratulate all of you for making it so far in this great Euroquiz competition. We're very, very happy to support the Euroquist. We think it's a great initiative. And I'm delighted that you, the citizens of the future, are learning so much about your European neighbors, their culture, their history, their geography, and their languages. Um, and this is something that I think will help you a lot in the future. And I think you're going to have a great, great, great future ahead. The European Parliament is always interested in hearing the viewpoints of its younger uh, citizens and of young people from all over Europe. And we are here to represent all of the citizens of Europe. And you are part of Europe and will be very much involved in shaping the future of Scotland, the UK and Europe in the future. I would like to welcome you all again on behalf of the European Parliament to the final, congratulate you all to your success getting this far. And I would also like to say a big, big, big congratulations to all the, your classmates and all the other teams that have been taking part in the heats of the Euroquiz this year. It's been a bit of a strange year for all of us, but we're all doing our best to try to make this into us an enjoyable and fantastic and inclusive uh, experience uh, as we can. And I would also like to especially thank your, your teachers and your parents for supporting all of you through these difficult times and through the competition so far. Welcome. Now that we're all uh, warmed up and introduced, uh, I can now reveal to you how this quiz is going to be run today. I'm sure you already know this from your teachers, but uh, it's good to have a bit of a repetition, so I'll let you know. Today's final is made up of three rounds in which you all will participate. We'll start with round one, geography and history, which has 15 questions. These will be answered in pairs within your teams and then you will hand your answer papers to your teacher. The points will be added up at the end to give the team score. After all that has happened, we will move to round two, which is my favorite round, the language round. This involves 15 questions for teams. And during this round, you can all discuss your answers. The first 10 questions are spoken language questions in German, Italian, Spanish, and French, followed by five general knowledge language questions. These questions have been developed in partnership with Education Scotland and SILT, Scotland's National Centre for Languages, and they have been recorded by native speakers uh, from Harriet Watt University in Edinburgh. So thank you to all of them for helping out. After that, 
we will have round three, Understanding Europe, which focuses on culture and European affairs. This round has 15 questions, and at this stage, you will again be asked to work in pairs with the person sitting right next to you. Points will be added up to give a team score. After each round, we'll take you through the correct answers while the papers are being marked, and the team in the lead after all three rounds will be crowned EuroQuiz 2020 National Champions. What a great title. The instructions will be repeated again before we start each round. And it's all that's left to me to say congratulations again for reaching the final stage of the EuroQuiz. And we hope you have fun participating today. Good luck. If you are ready, we'll now begin. Round one has 15 questions for you to answer in pairs and will cover geography and history. Working with the person next to you, listen to the question. You can then discuss your answer and one of you should write the answer on your answer sheet. Remember not to let the other pair in your team hear what you're saying. You should have two answer sheets in front of you, one sheet per pair. Please try to spell as well as you can, however spelling will not count against you as long as the meaning is clear. You will hear the questions and the possible answers. I'll ask each question twice and the questions will also appear on the screen. Question one. The island of Corsica is part of which country? The island of Corsica is part of which country? Question 2. Which currency is used in Hungary? Which currency is used in Hungary? Question 3. The Strait of Gibraltar separates Europe from which country in Africa? Is it A. Egypt, B. Algeria, or C. Morocco? The Strait of Gibraltar separates Europe from which country in Africa? A. Egypt, B. Algeria, C. Morocco. Question 4. Which French landmark was completed in 1889 and remained the tallest structure in the world for the next 41 years? Which French landmark was completed in 1889 and remained the tallest structure in the world for the next 41 years? Question 5. The invasion of which country in 1939 started the Second World War? The invasion of which country in 1939 started the Second World War?
Question 6. Travelling on a direct route from Calais to Hamburg, including the starting and finishing points, how many countries would you travel through? Travelling on a direct route from Calais to Hamburg, including the starting and finishing points, how many countries would you travel through? Question 7. What is the name of the Principality located in the Pyrenees? What is the name of the Principality located in the Pyrenees? Question 8. Alexander the Great was king of which ancient kingdom? A. The Roman Empire B. Macedon, Macedonia C. Sparta Alexander the Great was king of which ancient kingdom? A. Roman Empire B. Macedon, Macedonia C. Sparta. Question 9. Which time period, meaning rebirth, bridged the gap between the Middle Ages and the modern era. Which time period, meaning rebirth, bridged the gap between the Middle Ages and the modern era? Question 10. What is the name of the sea that lies between Italy and Croatia? Is it A. The Adriatic Sea? B. Caspian Sea? C. Black Sea? What is the name of the sea that lies between Italy and Croatia? Adriatic Sea? Caspian Sea? Or Black Sea? A, B or C? Question 11. What is the capital of Lithuania? What is the capital of Lithuania? Question 12. What was the main religion of the south of Spain during the Middle Ages? A. Islam B. Buddhism C. Judaism What was the main religion of the south of Spain during the Middle Ages? A. Islam B. Buddhism or C. Judaism
Question 13. Which British physicist wrote A Brief History of Time in 1988? Which British physicist wrote A Brief History of Time in 1988? Question 14. Which European flag has white, green and red horizontal stripes in that sequence? Which European flag has white, green and red horizontal stripes in that sequence? And question 15. Which of these is not a Greek island? A. Sardinia B. Crete C. Rhodes Which of these is not a Greek island? A. Sardinia B. Crete C. Rhodes Well done. This is the end of round one. Please now hand your answer sheet to your teacher and we'll take you through the answers for this round. Remember, you're under strict EuroQuiz conditions and you cannot make any changes to your paper. Here are their answers for round one. Question one. The island of Corsica is part of which country? France. Question two. Which currency is used in Hungary? The answer is foreign. Question three. The Strait of Gibraltar separates Europe from which country in Africa? The answer is C, Morocco. Question four. Which French landmark was completed in 1889 and remained the tallest structure in the world for the next 41 years? The Eiffel Tower. Question five. The invasion of which country in 1939 started the Second World War? Poland. Six. Traveling on a direct route from Calais to Hamburg, including the starting and finishing points, how many countries would you travel through? Four, and the countries are France, Belgium, the Netherlands, and Germany. Question seven. What's the name of the principality located in the Pyrenees? The answer is Andorra. Question eight, Alexander the Great was king of which ancient kingdom? B, Macedon or Macedonia.
question 9. Which time period, meaning rebirth, bridged the gap between the Middle Ages and the modern era? The answer is Renaissance, meaning rebirth. Question 10. What is the name of the sea that lies between Italy and Croatia? It's A, the Adriatic Sea. Question 11. What is the capital of Lithuania? Vilnius. Question 12. What was the main religion in the south of Spain during the Middle Ages? A, B or C? It's A, Islam. Question 13. Which British physicist wrote A Brief History of Time in 1988? Stephen Hawking. Question 14. Which European flag has white, green and red horizontal stripes in that sequence? And the answer is Bulgaria. And finally, question 15. Which of these is not a Greek island? A. Sardinia, B. Crete or C. Rhodes? A. Sardinia. Well done. That is the end of round one and we will now move on to round two. We'll now begin round two, the language round. This involves 15 questions for teams and you may discuss your answers. You should have one answer sheet per team of four in front of you. The first 10 questions are spoken language questions in German, Italian, Spanish and French, followed by five reading questions in these languages. For listening questions 1 to 10, you'll be asked different questions in English and you'll hear the answers spoken in German, Italian, Spanish and French. You'll hear each recording twice. After the second time, you'll be given a few moments to discuss the answer with your team. Write down the answer to the question in English on your sheet. The questions are written on your answer sheets to remind you. You may make notes at any time, but it's extremely important that you remain silent while you're listening to the voices. Let's begin. Question 1. What is this person's favourite subject at school? Ich lese gern Bücher und mein Lieblingsfach ist Geschichte. Ich lese gern Bücher und mein Lieblingsfach ist Geschichte. Mi piace leggere i libri e La mia materia preferita è la storia. Mi piace leggere i libri e la mia materia preferita è la storia. Me gusta leer libros y mi asignatura favorita es historia. Me gusta leer libros. Y mi asignatura favorita es historia. J'aime lire des livres y ma matière préférée es la historia. J'aime lire des livres y ma matière préférée es la historia. Question 2. 
Question 2. What does this mean in English? Ich wohne mit meinen Eltern in Aberdeen. Ich wohne mit meinen Eltern in Aberdeen. Abito con i miei genitori ad Aberdeen. Abito con i miei genitori ad Aberdeen. Vivo con mis padres in Aberdeen. Vivo con mis padres in Aberdeen. J'habite avec mes parents à Aberdeen. J'habite avec mes parents à Aberdeen. Question 3. How many sisters does this person have? Ich habe einen Bruder und zwei Schwestern. Ich habe einen Bruder und zwei Schwestern. Ho oh, un fratello e due sorelle. Ho oh, un fratello e due sorelle. Tengo un hermano y dos hermanas. Tengo un hermano y dos hermanas. J'ai un frère et deux sœurs. J'ai un frère et deux sœurs. Question 4. What does this mean in English? Sprechen Sie bitte langsamer. Sprechen Sie bitte langsamer. Parla più piano per favore. Parla più piano per favore. Por favor, habla más despacito. Por favor, habla más despacito. S'il vous plaît, Parlez plus lentement. S'il vous plaît, parlez plus lentement. Question 5. Where is this person going on holiday? Ich werde im Urlaub nach Polen fahren. Ich werde im Urlaub nach Polen fahren. Vado in vacanza in Polonia. Vado in vacanza in Polonia. Voy de vacaciones a Polonia. Voy de vacaciones a Polonia. Je vais en vacances en Pologne. Je vais en vacances en Pologne. Question 6. What can be found in this person's town? In meiner Stadt gibt es ein Schwimmbad, aber keine Bibliothek. In meiner Stadt gibt es ein Schwimmbad, aber keine Bibliothek. Nella mia città c'è la piscina, ma non c'è la biblioteca. Nella mia città c'è la piscina, ma non c'è la biblioteca. In mi città Hay una piscina, pero no hay biblioteca. En mi ciudad hay una piscina, pero no hay biblioteca. 
Dans ma ville, il y a une piscine, mais il n'y a pas de bibliothèque. Dans ma ville, il y a une piscine, mais il n'y a pas de bibliothèque. Question 7. How does this person describe their mother? Meine Mutter hat lange Haare und braune Augen. Meine Mutter hat lange Haare und braune Augen. Mia madre ha i capelli lunghi e gli occhi castani. Mia madre ha i capelli lunghi e gli occhi castani. Mi madre tiene el pelo largo y los ojos marrones. Mi madre tiene el pelo largo y los ojos marrones. Ma mère a les cheveux longs et les yeux marrons. Ma mère a les cheveux longs et les yeux marrons. Question 8. On which day of the week does this person play tennis? Am Donnerstag? Spiele ich Tennis nach der Schule. Am Donnerstag spiele ich Tennis nach der Schule. Gioco a Tennis il giovedì dopo scuola. Gioco a Tennis il giovedì dopo scuola. Juego al tenis los jueves, después del colegio. Juego al tenis los jueves, después del colegio. Les jeudis, je joue au tennis après l'école. Les jeudis, je joue au tennis après l'école. Question 9. What time does school start? Die Schule beginnt um 8 Uhr. Die Schule beginnt um 8 Uhr. La scuola inizia alle 8. La scuola inizia alle 8. El día escolar comienza a las ocho. El día escolar comienza a las ocho. La journée scolaire commence a huit heures. La journée scolaire commence a huit heures. And question 10. What is this person's favorite food? Ich liebe französisches Essen und mein Lieblingsessen ist Käse. Ich liebe französisches Essen und mein Lieblingsessen ist Käse. Amo la cucina francese e il mio cibo preferito è il formaggio. Amo la cucina francese e il mio cibo preferito è il formaggio. Mi encanta la cocina francese e mi comida favorita è il queso. Mi encanta la cocina francese e mi comida favorita 
el queso. J'adore la cuisine française et ma nourriture préférée est le fromage. J'adore la cuisine française et ma nourriture préférée est le fromage. Well done. Now we'll move on to the reading section. Erin has received a response from her e-twinning partner. Read the translations on your answer sheet in the language or languages you're learning in school and answer questions 11 to 15. You'll have a few minutes to complete this section in your teams.
Bravo! Please now hand your answer sheet to your teacher and we'll take you through the answers for this round. Here are the answers to round two. Question one. What's this person's favourite subject at school? The answer is history. Question two. What does this mean in English? I live in Aberdeen with my parents. Or I live with my parents in Aberdeen. Question three. How many sisters does this person have? The answer is two. I have one brother and two sisters. Question four. What does this mean in English? Please speak more slowly. Question five, where is this person going on holiday? The answer is Poland. I'm going to Poland on holiday. Question six, what can be found in this person's hometown? The answer is a swimming pool or a pool. In my town, there's a pool but there's not a library. Question seven. How does this person describe their mother? With long hair and brown eyes. My mother has long hair and brown eyes. Question eight. On which day of the week does this person play tennis? Thursdays. I play tennis on Thursdays after school. Question nine. What time does school start? The answer is eight o'clock, 8 a.m. The school day starts at eight o'clock. And question 10. What is this person's favourite food? The answer here is cheese. I love French cuisine and my favourite food is cheese. And now we'll go through the reading questions 11 to 15. Question 11, how old is Sarah? The answer is 14, 14 years old. Question 12, Sarah lives with her mum, dad and sister, true or false? This is false. Sarah lives with her mother, her grandfather, and her sister. Question 13. What's Sarah's hobby? The answer is skateboarding. I like skateboarding in the park with my friends. Question 14. Sarah's birthday is on the 4th of August. And finally, number 15. Who shares a birthday with Sarah? Her cousin. Well done. That's the end of round two, the language round. 
And now we will move on to the third and final round, Understanding Europe. We will now move on to the third and final round, Understanding Europe. This round has 15 questions for you to answer in pairs and will cover culture and European affairs. Working with the person next to you, listen to each question. You can then discuss your answer and one of you should write the answer on the answer sheet. You are not allowed to confer with the other pair in your team. You should have two answer sheets in front of you, one per pair. As with all previous rounds, the question will be asked twice. Please listen carefully. The questions will also appear on the screen. Let's begin. Question one. In which city would you find Schiphol Airport? In which city would you find Schiphol Airport? Question two. Which European country is famous for schatbular or, or meatballs? Which European country is famous for schatbular or meatballs? Question three. Gargoyles are an important feature in which type of architecture? A. Renaissance B. Postmodern or C. Gothic Gargoyles are an important feature in which type of architecture? A. Renaissance B. Postmodern C. Gothic Question four. Sanna Marin is currently the youngest serving state leader in the world. Which country is she prime minister of? Sanna Marin is currently the youngest serving state leader in the world. Which country is she prime minister of? Question five. Dutch, English and Danish are part of which language family? Dutch, English and Danish are part of which language family? Question six. Name the three countries in the Benelux Union. Name the three countries in the Benelux Union. Question seven. At what age did Wolfgang Mozart compose his first piece of music? At what age did Wolfgang Mozart compose his first piece of music? 
A, 5, B, 11, or C, 14? A, 5, B, 11, or C, 14? Question 8. Which anonymous artist created this famous street art? Which anonymous artist created this famous street art? Question 9. What is the name of the stage show featuring traditional Irish music and dancing? What's the name of the stage show featuring traditional Irish music and dancing? Question 10. Every year, certain European cities are chosen to be the European capitals of culture. Name one of the 2020 capitals of culture. Every year, certain European cities are chosen to be the European capitals of culture. Name one of the 2020 capitals of culture. Question 11. What annual gifts do Norway send to Edinburgh and London as a token of gratitude for the UK's support to Norway during the Second World War? A. Christmas tree B. Sculpture C. Flower display What annual gifts do Norway send to Edinburgh and London as a token of gratitude for the UK's support to Norway during the Second World War. A. Christmas tree B. Sculpture C. Flower display Question 12. Italian author Carlo Collodi is widely known for writing which children's story? A. Rapunzel B. The Adventures of Pinocchio C. Cinderella Italian author Carlo Collodi is widely known for writing which children's story? Rapunzel The Adventures of Pinocchio or Cinderella Question 13. For how many years was the United Kingdom a member of the EU? For how many years was the United Kingdom a member of the EU? A. 55 B. 47 or C. 32 A. 55 B. 47 or C. 32 years
Question 14. Name one EU candidate country. Name one EU candidate country. And question 15. In 2016, the SNP won the Scottish Parliament elections. In which year will Scotland's next parliamentary elections take place? In 2016, the SNP won the Scottish Parliament elections. In which year will Scotland's next parliamentary elections take place? Well done to you all. I'd now like to invite your teachers for the final time to collect in your answer papers. We will now take you through the answers for this third and final round. Round three answers. Question one. In which city would you find Schiphol Airport? The answer is Amsterdam. Question two. Which European country is famous for Schuttbuller meatballs? Sweden. Question three. Gargoyles are an important feature in which type of architecture? Gothic. C. Question 4. San Marin is currently the youngest serving state leader in the world. Which country is she Prime Minister of? Finland. Question 5. Dutch, English and Danish are part of which language family? Germanic. Question 6. Name the three countries in the Benelux Union. Three countries are Belgium, the Netherlands and Luxembourg. Benelux. Question 7. At what age did Wolfgang Mozart compose his first piece of music? The answer is A. Five years old. Question 8. Which anonymous artist created this famous street art? Banksy. Question 9. What's the name of the stage show featuring traditional Irish music and dancing? The answer here is River Dance. Question 10. Every year certain European cities are chosen to be European capitals of culture. Name one of the 2020 capitals of culture. Possible answers are Rijeka in Croatia or Galway in Ireland. Rijeka in Croatia 
or Galway in Ireland? Question 11. What annual gifts do Norway send to Edinburgh and London? The answer is A, Christmas tree. Question 12. Italian author Carlo Collodi is known for writing The Adventures of Pinocchio. Question 13. The United Kingdom was a member of the EU for B, 47 years. And question 14. Name one EU candidate country. Possible answers are Albania, North Macedonia, Montenegro, Serbia and Turkey. Any one of these. And finally, in 2016, the SNP won the Scottish Parliament elections. In what year will the next elections take place? The answer is 2021. Well done to you all. This takes us to the end of round three and the end of the EuroQuiz final in 2020. Hello everyone, my name is Jane and I'm the Director of the Scottish European Educational Trust, or SEAT, the organisation responsible for running EuroQuiz across Scotland each year. SEAT is a charity committed to promoting international education, skills development and language learning amongst children and young people across Scotland, just like all of you who are participating in EuroQuiz today. I'd like to congratulate you all for taking part in this year's EuroQuiz project, from the preparation in your classrooms to the regional heats and right through to the final here today. I hope you've all enjoyed your EuroQuiz experience and your virtual visit to the Scottish Parliament this afternoon. It's been a real pleasure to celebrate all of your hard work. In total, over 440 schools participated in this year's heats, directly involving more than 2,200 pupils this really highlights the achievements of all of you who have made it through to the final stage today. We'll be receiving all of your scores and answer papers from your teachers and look forward to announcing the 2020 EuroQuiz champions online later this week. Please keep an eye on our website and Twitter for the announcement. Before we finish today, we'd like to thank the Scottish Parliament and Deputy Presiding Officer Christine Graham, MSP, for introducing the event and allowing us to see the debating chamber virtually. We're also grateful to Per Johansson, Head of the European Parliament Liaison Office in Edinburgh, for welcoming us and introducing the format of the event. We'd like to thank our main sponsors for this year's project, the Scottish Government and the Ganachy Trust. We're also grateful to support from several smaller charitable trusts and local businesses who supported this year's heats including Bridge of Weir Leather Company and Thomas Tunnock Limited, each passionate about helping young people to build the confidence and skills in communicating internationally. There are several other organisations and partners who provide support each year towards the preparations for EuroQuiz. We'd particularly like to thank Education Scotland and SILT, Scotland's National Centre for Languages, and Harriet Watt University for partnering with us in preparing the language questions and native speaker video recordings. She also works closely with local heat coordinators from all 32 local authority areas and their support is vital in enabling pupils across Scotland to take part in the project. We thank you all for your support in this continued collaborative effort. Finally, we'd like to thank you, the participants for adapting so well to this new online format and continuing to showcase your learning. We hope that researching different countries, cultures and languages has inspired you to keep learning about our neighbours across Europe and beyond. The knowledge, teamwork and enthusiasm shown by participants has been clear throughout the project. Well done, congratulations and thank you all for taking part in EuroQuiz 2020.